Hello, uh, welcome to this online worship service for the second Sunday after Pentecost, June the 14th. These worship services are sponsored by Peace and First Lutheran Congregations in Astoria, Oregon. We are uh, two ELCA, Evangelical Lutheran Church in America, congregations uh, in Astoria, Oregon, and we are pleased to work together uh, and offer these worship services. We hope that uh, you can follow along, not only uh, um, online, but if you'd like to download the bulletin, the worship program, you can do that by going to our website, astoriafirstlutheran.com, uh, to our worship resources, and there you will find the bulletin for this Sunday. You may also uh, uh, wish to be on our email list, in which case all the links will be supplied there, uh, and we're happy to give you a weekly update. So let us center ourselves now, deep, breathe deeply God's grace and breath into our lungs, and let us begin our worship with our confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, whose steadfast love is everlasting, whose faithfulness endures from generation to generation. Amen. Amen. Trusting in the mercy of God, let us confess our sin. Reconciling God, we confess that we do not trust your abundance and we deny your presence in our lives. We place our hope in ourselves and rely on our own efforts. We fail to believe that you provide enough for all. We abuse your good creation for our own benefit. We fear difference and do not welcome others as you have welcomed us. We sin in thought, word, and deed. By your grace, forgive us. Through your love, renew us. And in your spirit, lead us so that we may live and serve you in newness of life. Amen. Beloved of God, by the radical abundance of divine mercy, we have peace with God through Christ Jesus, through whom we have obtained grace upon grace. Our sins are forgiven. Let us live now in hope, for hope does not disappoint, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit. Amen. I invite you to sing with us now uh, at home or wherever you are this wonderful opening hymn in our Evangelical Lutheran Worship Hymnal. It is number 532 and it's titled Gather Us In.
greet you with that ancient of greetings from the Apostle Paul. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. God of compassion, you have opened the way for us and brought us to yourself. Pour your love into our hearts that, overflowing with joy, we may freely share the blessings of your realm and faithfully proclaim the good news of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Now I invite the children to come forward and join me for a brief message. Well, it's good to see you all, and look who I have here. You know, it's been a while since I've been together with many of our youth here in the congregation, and I miss you so much that I set up some chairs and I put some stuffed animals and some dolls in there because... It makes me remember the youth of our congregation. I think uh, of Lena and Isaac, of uh, Fisher and Hazel, of uh, uh, Susanna and uh, Thomas, and of um, Max and Sequoia, and oh, Kirk and Ellen, my goodness, how could I forget them? So um, there are so many of you that I am missing now. I set these chairs out to remind me of you. And today, uh, it especially reminds me of you because of what our first reading says. It says that you, that is God's people, and you who are sitting here and worshiping or out there worshiping, uh, you are precious, chosen by God, and given a purpose. And that's what it says. You are precious. Now, I don't know if you have something that's precious to you. I have, uh, for example, this rabbit, this nice bunny rabbit with a bib, you know. Maybe you have a stuffed toy, too, that is precious to you. But isn't he so soft and cuddly? He's precious. And I would be really, uh, I would be really sorry if I didn't have this to cuddle. Maybe you have something like that, too. But our first lesson says, God who created everything, maybe you have something precious to you, but more important than things, and all things belong to God, but more important than those things God gives us is you, people, our loved ones, our mothers and fathers, our grandparents, our friends, our neighbors. You're precious in God's sight. And as Jesus will tell us, you are commanded to go out and spread that wonderful news that all people are precious and loved by God. Jesus gave us a new commandment, he said. A new commandment I give to you, that you love one another. So, I'm going to teach you a song and invite you to sing along with me. This is my commandment, that you love one another, that your joy may be full. And so we're going to sing those words. This is my commandment, that you love one another, that your joy may be full. And I'm going to ask you to stand up and join me. Stand up at home. And I'm asking some people to come and help you all to stand up here and hold these. Uh, and we're going to ask you to practice marching a bit too, right? Because this is a marching song to get us out there. <laughs> and do what Jesus tells us to do. So we're going to march. Here we go now. This is my commandment, that you love one another, that your joy may be full. One more time. This is my commandment, that you love one another, that your joy may be that your joy may be full, that your joy may be full. March, march now. This is my commandment, that you love one another, that your joy may be full. Thank you, and God bless you this week.
The Old Testament scripture reading is Exodus 19, verses 2 through 8. The Israelites had journeyed from Rephidim, entered the wilderness of Sinai, and camped in the wilderness. Israel camped there in front of the mountain. Then Moses went up to, went up to God. The Lord called him from the mountain, saying, Thus you shall say to the house of Jacob, and tell the Israelites, you have seen what I did to the Egyptians and how I bore you on eagle's wings and brought you to myself. Now therefore, if you obey my voice and keep my covenant, you shall be my treasured possessions out of all the peoples. Indeed, the whole earth is mine, but you shall be for me a priestly kingdom and a holy nation. These are the words that you shall speak to the Israelites. So Moses came, summoned the elders of the people, and set before them all these words that the Lord had commanded him. The people all answered as one, everything that the Lord has spoken, we will do. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We will now pray with one another, uh, chanting Psalm 100, verses 1 through 5. And it has a refrain, which you will find in your bulletin, which we repeat um, after verses uh, 3 and 5. I will sing the light-colored uh, script, and you answer with the bold lettering. We will uh, have Lori play through the refrain once so you can hear it, and then we'll sing it once together and then pray the song. let us proclaim Alleluia holy 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 is the Lord of hosts God's glory fills the whole earth Alleluia the Holy Gospel according to Matthew the ninth chapter glory to you O Lord Jesus went about all the cities and villages teaching in their synagogues and proclaiming the good news of the kingdom and curing every disease and every sickness. When he saw the crowds, he had compassion for them because they were harassed and helpless like sheep without a shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore ask the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. 
Then Jesus summoned his 12 disciples and gave them authority over unclean spirits to cast them out and to cure every disease and every sickness. These are the names of the 12 apostles. First, Simon, also known as Peter, and his brother Andrew, James of Zebedee, and his brother John. Philip and Bartholomew, Thomas and Matthew, the tax collector, James, son of Alphaeus and Thaddeus, Simon, the Canaanian, and Judas Iscariot, the one who betrayed him. These twelve Jesus sent out with the following instructions. Go nowhere among the Gentiles and enter no town of the Samaritans, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. As you go, proclaim the good news. The kingdom of heaven has come near. Cure the sick, raise the dead, cleanse the lepers, cast out demons. You received without payment. Give without payment. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Grace and peace be to you all from our Lord and Savior, Christ Jesus. Dear friends, for my sermon today, I thought it important to bring one of the uh, baptismal fonts that we use and set it here on our table, our communion table, um, because this is where being precious in God's sight begins. Of course, when we're born, we are precious too, but God calls us to a purpose, and through baptism, God says, you are mine, and I love you. So I wanted to bring this baptismal font as a symbol of our calling. In our first reading for today, we hear God's charge to God's people. Now, therefore, if you listen to my voice, I know your text might say obey, but the Hebrew really says, listen, if you listen to my voice and keep my covenant, you shall be my treasured possession out of all the peoples. Indeed, the whole earth is mine. But you shall be for me a priestly kingdom and a holy nation. It is a contract, in a way, a covenant that binds and obligates God's people to continually hearken to, listen to God's calling and God's teaching, God's instruction. There is a phrase in French that leads us to the meaning of this calling. You probably have heard it before, noblesse oblige. It literally means nobility obligates. French speakers transformed this phrase into a noun which English speakers picked up in the 19th century. Then, as now, noblesse oblige referred to the unwritten obligation of people from a noble ancestry to act honorably and generously to others. Later, by extension, it also came to refer to the obligation of anyone who is in a better position than others, due, for example, to a high office or celebrity, the obligation to act respectably and responsibly. At our Pentecost celebration, we heard Jesus tell his disciples from John's Gospel, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. We are given a commission, a calling by God, and it can all be summed up with a phrase, noblesse oblige. Privilege entails responsibility. Your calling through your baptism as God's holy people entails a responsibility for the world and for others. Well, how do we respond to this? What is our response? In today's first reading, the Exodus authors offer a reminder to our ancestors in faith and to all who read their words 
that human history has been shaped by the loving overtures of a God who chooses to be invested in the lives of humanity. God calls Israel a special possession, dearer than all others, a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. God likens the divine care and compassion for Israel to that of a mother eagle, an image with which the ancient Near Easterners could readily identify. And I dare say we here in the Pacific Northwest, as we walk along the Columbia River, see the eagles nesting and fishing for, uh, to care for their young. They knew what it meant that God cares for us the way a mother eagle cares for its young. From the Exodus reading, where we are reminded of God's loving involvement in all things human, we turn our eyes to Jesus in Matthew's gospel, who gives us a clue as to how to respond to God's gifts, God's mandate. Matthew points to the motivation of Jesus as one of compassion, compassion for those who were troubled, left to their own devices without leaders, without leaders who cared for them. Then he portrays Jesus announcing his intention to share his mission, his mission of loving and healing, of, of kindness and compassion with those he had called to be with him, to follow him. The disciples receive in Matthew's gospel a commissioning here, a commissioning which comes to its fulfillment then after Jesus' death and resurrection, that what we celebrated at Pentecost. Twelve people are named here, but the followers of Jesus are many, and we who claim Jesus' spirit through our baptism we are privileged to be numbered among them. And if we remain true to our calling, those numbers should steadily and surely increase. There should be no voice that goes unheard, no hurt that goes unattended, no need that remains unmet. Just as Jesus sent forth those first followers to announce the reign of God, and to accompany that announcement with actions that extended God's gifts to others, so too Jesus continues to send to each of us. Out, go out in the world. Bring God's compassion and love and healing. There are times, however, when being called to serve and share seems a responsibility too challenging to fulfill. In those times, we are to draw nearer to Jesus, as the old tomb says, draw nearer to Jesus, and to remember those words of Jesus in our gospel text. Without cost, you have received. Without cost, you are to give. Jesus' followers are to be mindful that every breath we take is a gift. Every dawn and every sunset we are able to witness our gifts. Every family member, every friend, each and all our gifts. Every holiday, next week we will celebrate Father's Day. Every holiday and holy day we are to welcome and celebrate as a gift. Every good book and movie or play we enjoy is a gift. Every good teacher we have ever had is a gift. I know it's the end of school now, so we need to celebrate the gift that our teachers give us. Every job that has enabled us to feed, clothe, and shelter ourselves and our loved ones has been a gift. Every experience of nature's incomparable beauty and inscrutable mystery is a gift, as are all astounding human accomplishments from the pyramids in Egypt to the discovery of vaccines against disease 
which we are praying mightily for a, a vaccination or a vaccine against the coronavirus. All these are gifts. All our talents and skills, our ability to learn and to teach, all are gifts. Every political and religious freedom is a gift as well, as is the right to vote and to select those who will lead and represent the best interests of our nation's citizens. Every sacramental experience, every conversation with God's word, all these are gifts, all are blessings, all are privileges that require a response. Without cost, we have received. Without cost, we are to give. Noblesse oblige. God's living word in Jesus Christ in you, for you, for us and for all the world. But this obligates us, obligates us to live that compassion that Jesus had, to be moved for love for others. We're coming up this week, dear friends, on the fifth anniversary of the horrific murder of the Emmanuel Nine by a stranger who was welcomed into their Wednesday evening Bible study. We have uh, traditionally Wednesday evening Bible studies here, and so it's not hard to imagine welcoming and being uh, befriending a stranger who comes in to join in God's word with you. He came in to Mother Emanuel Church in Charleston, South Carolina, and he shot nine of those people in, in Bible study, an act made all the more horrific as the perpetrator, an avowed white supremacist, sought to incite a race war, and so he chose a bastion of black culture, the African Methodist Episcopal Church in Charleston, to enact his hatred. It touches home for us, not only because it's horrifying to think of this, but it touches home to us because two of their victims, their, two of their pastors, were graduates of Lutheran Theological Southern Seminary. And the white perpetrator himself was baptized in a Lutheran church. Dear friends, we need to own this. We need to own this and repent when we have failed as a church to raise up committed disciples and commit ourselves to our calling to bring God's loving, healing compassion to all people. We need to own this, dear friends. But we also need to hear the gospel again, anew, afresh, as we recall how the world was shocked to its core and any political rioting and hoped for race war that this heinous crime was to ignite was quenched when one by one family members, loved ones of the victim spoke words of forgiveness to the perpetrator. Mind-blowing. People, hard for people to comprehend. Yet here is the gospel in the midst of this horror and tragedy. We will have opportunity to commemorate this fifth anniversary as our church, the Evangelical Lutheran Church in America, has called us to a day of repentance, learning, and prayer this coming Wednesday, June 17. 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 15 and 16 says this, As the one who called you is holy, be holy yourselves in all your conduct, for it is written, you shall be holy, for I am holy. And again, later in 1 Peter chapter 2, we hear these words, come to Jesus Christ, a living stone, 
Though rejected by mortals, yet chosen and precious in God's sight. And like living stones, let yourselves be built into a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood, to offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. Noblesse, noblesse oblige, dear friends, God's living word in Jesus Christ, making you precious in God's sight and commissioning you, calling you to bring healing and peace and compassion to all. May that be so now and in the days and weeks to come. Amen. I invite you to join with us at home as we sing a song that comes from South Africa, Tumamina. It's in the Evangelical Lutheran Worship, Hymn 549. The English translation is, Send Me Jesus. And the words are very simple, tumamina, which is repeated, tumamina, 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 and then nkosi, we'll say that, uh, and nkosi yam, nkosi yam. So we'll sing the hymn through twice in the African language, and then in English we'll sing verses one and two, and then we'll close out one last time with the verse in the African language, Tumamina. to unity with one another and the whole creation, let us pray for our shared world. Holy One, you bring us together and call us your own. Bless theologians, teachers, and preachers who help us grow in faith, following the examples of the Emmanuel Nine, and our ancient brothers and sisters, Basil the Great, Gregory of Nyssa, Gregory of Nazianzus, and the teacher Macrina, whom we commemorate this day. Guide your church that we might be a holy people. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Holy One, the whole earth is yours. Where there is fire, bring cool air and new growth. Where there is flooding, bring abatement. Where there is drought, bring rain. Inspire us to care for what you have provided. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Holy One, we have created divisions you will not own. In places of conflict, especially here in our own land, in our cities, in our towns, in our homes. Raise up leaders who work to develop lasting peace and reconciliation. Encourage organizations and individuals who care for all forced to leave their home. Be with us in these trying times. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Holy One, you care for those who are harassed and helpless. Protect and defend those who are abused. Heal those who are sick. 
Feed all who hunger. Empower all whose voices go unheard and help us respond to the pressing needs of our neighbors. We especially lift up those in our community who are printed in our bulletin, who we bear in our hearts. Stand with them, dear Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Holy One, you provide a plentiful harvest of gifts and resources. Prepare us to labor and gather the fruits of this congregation that we might discover new ways of living. Minister to us in our work that we do not lose heart. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Holy One, you call some to national service. And so we pray for those in the military, those who are first responders, whether it be police, EMTs, doctors and nurses, caring Samaritans. We pray for those especially who have offered their lives at this time and service to nation from this congregation, those who are printed in our bulletins and those whom we carry in our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Holy One, you bring all people to yourself. We give thanks for the holy people who have gone before us, especially those whom we bear in our hearts and those who we will commemorate this Wednesday, the Emmanuel Nine. Sustain us in your mission until the day you bear us up to join the saints in light. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Receive these prayers, O God, and those too deep for words through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And now receive this benediction. The Holy Three, the Holy One, increase your hope, strengthen your faith, deepen your love, and grant you peace. Amen. We join with one another and sing a uh, a wonderful song in the Evangelical Lutheran worship, hymn 669, Rise Up, O Saints of God. And just like we encourage the youth to get up, maybe I invite you at home to get up and uh, get your marching shoes on and we can march with this uh, song, Rise Up, O Saints of God.
Now may you go in peace. Christ is with you. Thanks be to God. Dear friends, a couple announcements uh, following our worship service. Thank you for your generous support of our ministry here. The ministry continues and we're serving the community through good gifts. We have a matching uh, fund right now, a peer grant of $500 and we're trying to match another $500 to uh, help serve the community by providing free testing for the uh, coronavirus. So. Uh, if you are able to uh, afford a little extra gift, um, send that in and we will do that matching grant. Um, also, summer is a time when we invite you at the beginning of our worship to sing your favorite hymns or pick out the hymns that you would like to sing. And we invite you to send in, uh, email us at the office or send us in a note saying which hymns you would like to uh, sing at the beginning of our worship service, our traditional summer hymns sing at the beginning. And lastly, I want to invite you to a special uh, occasion. At our last church-wide assembly for the Evangelical Lutheran Church in America in August of 2019, the assembly, your church, voted to set aside June the 17th as the Emmanuel uh, Nine Commemoration and Day of Repentance. And so we will have a special worship service, um, he, both online, but also in our community on Wednesday evening at 7 p.m. We invite you to gather outside around uh, Peace Lutheran Church on 12th and Exchange in downtown Astoria. Uh, bring your mask uh, and uh, bring your heart and we will gather uh, around the outside space there for a brief a service of prayer and confession and repentance uh, to honor uh, the victims and uh, the saints of the Emmanuel Nine, the Mother Emmanuel Church in Charleston, South Carolina. So one of the fun things to do after the service is to go through the clips that didn't make it into the uh, video that is published and put them out as out clips. Uh, the challenge for this week is that the out clip <laughs> was likely uh, two-thirds of the service because the video machine quit recording on a couple key parts and uh, today is day two for all of the participants to show up and again go through the uh, uh, service so that we can have it for you on Sunday. Uh, I want to thank them for uh, their patience in doing this and coming back to church so that we can put together a full package and uh, a lesson learned about technology, that it has its limits and when there's uh, no backup, you have the ultimate backup of people's patience and participation. Uh, enjoy. As you can see, the sanctuary is empty. Uh, they left believing that the video was complete and the first technical 
uh, mishap occurred where most of the uh, service uh, didn't get recorded on the video machine. So we get to redo it. <laughs> Sorry. But we have a job to do. Jesus calls us to go out to the world, you know, and spread pick, <laughs> pick, 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 pick a creed, pick, pick one of these up. So then I do this. For hope does not disappoint because God's love has been poured into our hearts. Brothers and sisters. <laughs> well, I, I'll do whatever you want me to. I had the impression she was coming. Now she's got the shortest distance, so. Close. Close. Yeah, just because it kind of revs us up. Can we do that, Lori? <laughs> Psalm and the Gospel reading. That's in. This tree with the candles on it. And my hair was like bushy out. <laughs> and I started, I said, oh, I get to light the candles. And I started lighting the candles. And I started, of course, up there. And I went down to do the lower. And stuff. So my, my hair is on fire. We could take stones and set it up on the stones. So it's yeah. up off the grass. Yeah, put the bowl up on top of that. Put some tile underneath it. Put the bowl on that in case the bowl breaks, basically. 20, only 20% rain, they say, right now. Spring number Having problems. I haven't got enough material. This is my commandment that you love one another, that your joy may be full. One more time. This is my commandment that you love one another, that your your joy may be full, that your joy may be full, march, march, now, this is my commandment, that you love one another, that your joy 